Well, it's been a while since we've done any videos, so I thought we'd do one with this fella here. Uh, he'll be a pretty colorful, colorful Indian when we're done. He's got a neat looking hat with a Calvary crest up there on it. And the buffalo robe down below, which uh, I'll put some uh, designs on the lower part of it once it's painted. So, let's get cracking. Okay, what I'm going to do this time is because it's been so long since I first started doing these videos, I'm just going to begin again and explain things from the beginning as if, you know, a new person just showed up and I get questions all the time about how I do things and it's hard to refer them back to a video because I lose track of where those videos are and I just don't have the time to go back and search for them. So I'm just going to begin from the beginning and explain everything as I go along, alright? Okay, first things first. When painting. You can look on my table here, and although it looks like a mess, there's a, there's a reason for everything being where it is. Over here, I have my browns, tans. Back behind the carving here, I have my grays. A lot of these colors I've mixed, you know, you buy them down at the hobby shop or wherever, and you bring them home, and they're not the color is not exactly the way you want it. Well, I'll go ahead and mix the color the way I want it with what I buy from the store. Like uh, this gray here. Now this is a neutral gray, but I've added black to it because I like real dark grays sometimes. So now it's a real, real black, dark gray. Okay. And then I have uh, my reds here. All different kinds of different color reds, most important being this red iron oxide which I use for facial facial paint. I have a couple tubes of uh, Joe Sonia colors because someone told me that this is the best kind of color you can buy. Well that may well be true but at 420 and I bought these years ago at 420 a tube you know you can buy a lot of a lot of these style paints for what's in this paint here and by my way of thinking those paints are just as good as these although I do use these but certainly not as much as I use those all right on the as, as uh, you'll watch the video you'll always see black and white sitting here on this uh, sheet of paper because uh, I use them a lot and I like, they're kind of a color that's outside the normal color band. So I keep them separate and I just set them right here in front of me. I have my yellows back here with some orange. And again, those oranges are some that I've mixed myself. And a lot of times when you go to the store to buy a color, someone will say, go down there and get you a bottle of yellow ochre. Because I use yellow ochre a lot for mixing with uh, the red iron oxide to, to get my facial tones. Well, you'll go down there and what they had last month in a bottle called Yellow Ochre now becomes a bottle called Antique Gold. I don't know why they do this, but they do it constantly. So, just, uh, you know, learn your colors and you'll, you'll generally find what you're looking for, but it might be under an assumed name. Then I have my blues. You can see I got lots of blues here, but most importantly, I have this blue here, which is midnight blue, which is a real strong blue. Thinned out, it makes a perfect blue jean color, and uh, I'll use it with this uh, carving here to paint uh, to paint the color on a hat along with black. And then back behind here, I have some greens. Not very many greens because I can make all my greens with yellow and blue. And then over here I have my uh, gold and silver colors. Up here on the ledge I have uh, some uh, iridescent colors. I have two tubes. This is uh, rich copper 
and this is interference green and between these two I can get just about any color that I want. And up, up there that's just spare, spare paint. Over here in my paint box, I've got nice clean water. I try to keep my paint box clean each time. There's a piece of glass under here because when I get paint on here and it dries, I can take an old uh, old blade here and just scrape it all off. And with the towel, get it just back to uh, being really clean, which won't affect any colors that come later on. You can see a whole bunch of brushes in here. Some of these brushes, give you an idea of these brushes here. <laughs> you can tell they've really been used. I've got a bunch of them in here like that. These were brushes I bought in Tulsa. I'll bet you some of them are 20 or even more than 20 years old. And they're the best brushes I've ever had. And I use them constantly over some that uh, I bought new. Here's, here's one of them that's new. Fairly new. It's probably, I mean, it's as old as these brushes, but I haven't used it. And this thing here are brushes I don't use very often. Like, this is a makeup brush. You can buy these down at Walmart. Some of them aren't too cheap. You want one that's really soft. This one has uh, probably squirrel hair in it, or sable, they call it. Sable, but it's probably squirrel hair. It's great to dab a little paint on, work all the paint out of the brush, and then use it to paint uh, uh, highlights on your carvings. You'll probably see me use that later on. This brush here, it's it's getting old. It's probably about, I'd say it's 40 years old. I still use it. It's a good brush, watercolor brush. It's great also for you know dabbing a little paint on and brushing it all out and then using it paint highlights on the card. But like I say, it's getting old and it needs a good clean, which I'll do one day. Get you some of this here. This is brush cleaner. It's just soap, a mild soap. <laughs> you can see I'm going to have to go down and get me some, but this, this stuff will last you a long, long time. And uh, I use it to clean my brushes. What else? about this. Oh yeah, another thing. Clean brushes. Go down to Walmart or some store and get you a cheap cheap uh, can of spray hairspray to clean your brushes when they get really ratty. And they'll get ratty after a while. And just spray out a little pool. You can see this is where I clean all my brushes right here. I just spray out a little pool like that. Find a dirty brush in here. Oh, that one's pretty dirty. Yep, it's dirty. And you just stick it in there and you roll it around like that. And watch what happens. You can see the color come out of it. Push it down at an angle and just roll it back and forth. This isn't going to hurt your brushes. Don't ever sit there and do that. You're going to screw your brush up if you do that. You know, if you take care of your brushes, they last a long, long time. Especially if you get a good, you know, spring for some money and get you a good one. There, you can see all that dirt coming out of there. The more I rub, the more dirt comes out of it. And then after you do that, kind of shake that off. That's lacquer. Actually lacquer in that can. Can you believe that women spray lacquer on her hair? But anyway, then get your little tub of brush cleaner. Just work up a lather in that thing. And you 
you can see, see, you'll never, you know, over time, and like I say, this, these brushes are pretty old, the paint gets down here at the very end of the bristles where it goes around the ferrule here. You're just not going to get all of that out, out of there over time. But, you know, you can still get out a lot of it, and, and you can also see, you know, just look at the tip of this, how it's been worn down. Well, what, when it wears down like that, that's, to me, that's really when it starts getting good, because it develops its own little profile there. So anyway, take care of your brushes, and you won't spend a lot of money buying new ones. But you should spend a lot of money when you buy the first ones. Okay, now what? Getting over to this fella here. Let me take him apart here. You can see where on the top here, the reason this is dark is that's pencil, pencil lead that I've rubbed on there, which helped me match him up to the top of the hat to where it matches real well around there, like that. Okay, that's why that's dark like that. Take off my feather here. These are my feathers. This stuff here is a modeling compound, modeling paste. Comes in a big tub. Keep the lid on tight or else it'll dry out on you. You don't use very much of it, at least I don't. This costs 13 bucks. I use it, I dab it on here to create a, as you'll see later, to create a feather. That telephone call. Hang on. Okay. Anyway, I put that on here and it dries hard. Also acts as a glue to glue these feathers together. And it creates a little, uh, texture down here for the fluff of a feather that the Native Americans put on a, a lot of their feather decorations. I also use it put on a, I, to put on a thin coat on my feathers and then while it's really wet I use a toothpick I just dip my toothpick in the water and while this is wet I only do one side at a time. I'll come through here and I, I'll add texture to the feather. Some might think it's cheating because it's not carved, but that's okay. That's just the way I do things. It creates a nice textured feather. Okay? And then I tie the two feathers together and uh, glue a nail to them and the nail goes in the hole. And it makes a nice looking hat. And on my hat, the top part is separate from the bottom part. Okay, I do it that way for strength. Because the grain, grain of the, the grain of the brim of the hat is going this way, while the grain of the crown of the hat is going up and down. Now, if I had the grain of the brim of the hat going up and down it would be so fragile that it wouldn't be fair to the person who might buy this carving to sell it to him because it would break. But by doing it this way, that brim is never going to break. And then I just glue the two pieces together with some good strong glue and uh, it's ready to go. Now my body here, this is going to be a buffalo, well it is a buffalo robe. And in the lower part of it here is just the back side of the fur. And like I say, this will be painted and then there will be designs put on it. My bases, let me put this back together. Bases to me are as important as the carbon itself because they give it something to stand on something, a way to present your present your work. I always, when I make my bases, I always use a hardwood, either walnut or oak. This is walnut. 
costs more than pine. Pine does not make good bases because it just does not absorb a stain well. You want a hardwood, not a softwood. And walnut works terrific. Oak works fine. Not as pretty as a walnut base, but uh, a walnut base to me, that's the way to go. That shows you've got pride in your work. It makes your carving look classy. It's just like framing a picture. You know, a picture might be pretty, but you put a frame around it, it just looks better. Okay, I've, uh, on my router, I've routed the, around the bottom of the bottom piece, around the edge of the bottom piece, and created a little uh, area right here where a brass plaque will go. Again, putting a brass plaque on there is just like a base. It shows that you have pride in your work. And the person who views your work sees that name tag that you've taken the time to actually name your carving. You've taken the time to create a really good base for the carving to sit on. And your carving's just going to look better and it's that much more of a, an attraction for someone who might be interested in purchasing it. And it works, believe me, it works. So anyway, today I thought what we'd do is... Uh, Paint the head. I always start first by painting the head. So, my painting technique is I paint wet. Now this is just water. So first thing I do is soak my paint areas on my paint down with water. What this does You saw the color, the saw the wood change colors when I did this. See, here's here's the wood without it being wet, and then there's the color of the wood after you've wet it down. You have to remember that because you're painting on this color. You're not painting on that color. You're painting on top of this color. So this color is going to have an effect on the paint that you apply to it, and that's important. That's why you look at a lot of people's carvings. First, they, they don't wet it, and they paint directly on the wood heavy, and that paint just sets right on top of the wood, and it just looks dead. When I paint wet, what's going to happen when I put paint on here in light washes, not heavy paint? It's going to draw that down into the wood, and it's going to be real soft and attractive becomes part of the wood, not something sitting on top of the wood. So let's just get out my paint here. I'm going to use red iron oxide. I don't take too much of it, I don't think. And get another squeeze just in case. Put that away and the yellow ochre. Because this is Native American, they have dark skin, so I'm going to have to use a brown, which I'm looking for here, it's called Asphaltum. It's a terrific brown, there it is right there. I have another name for it, but I won't say it, say it on the video. Okay, now with my brush, I'll just clean, pull out some of this, pull out some of that. said I paint in washes. Start out light because you can always add uh, 
You can add more paint, but it's hard to take it off. Try it out down here on his neck first. That's looking good. Now, this is the lighter color, so I'm not worried about getting it on the hair because it's going to be dark. Work that right back in there. Mixed up there, but I didn't, so I'm gonna have to mix some more. So I'll pull out some more red, some yellow. Now where the wood comes out to a point, like on the nose, lips, your paint is going to be darker there than it will be where you've cut across the grain. Because the, where, you, where you've cut across, well just the opposite, excuse me. Where you've cut across the grain, the paint will be able to soak in a lot more than it would be on the tips of the noses or the chin or something like that. So, so you just have to allow for that. But you can see that uh, the wood comes back through, which to me is the way I, that I want it. It's wood carving. I want it to be to be looking like wood, not necessarily painted wood. All right, that looks pretty good. Now, using some straight red ochre, or red ochre, iron oxide, right here on his cheeks. So these are the areas that the sun hits. So it's going to be a little darker. Indians get sunburned too. And he's lit. Now, with some blue, you're probably saying blue. Well, I'll show you. Blue is what's going to make the face come alive a lot more.
that's where that glass comes in handy. Okay, just a little bit. See what, see what effect that had on that? Just amazing how just a little bit of blue. This is an old guy and after a while you get bags under your eyes. And then down here, they're just sort of giving him a little five o'clock shadow. You gotta be real careful with that blue too. You don't want or you get carried away with it, excuse me. And this is what I tell people, says, yeah, I'll use a little blue, and it's so light you can't even see it. Well, there's blue right there, and I'm using it. Don't paint the lips. Just take a little bit more there. really good. Got to do it under his chin. Don't want to forget that. Well, you might say, well, Indians didn't have beards. Oh, yes, they did. Some of them might not have, and a lot of them did. But that's not necessarily a five o'clock shadow. It just, well, I guess it is in a way. Okay, now the face is done, except for, I don't want to put a little red on his nose there just to bring that out a little bit more. Something. It's got white paint on it. A chip I heard down in there. Get out of there. there. So there you got his face. I don't paint the eyes in until the very last thing. That's the last thing I do is paint the eyes. There you go. See, he's he's going to look snazzy. I think this is going to be about as much as we can do with this video. But he's going to look good. Get that dark dark hat on there with a red stripe of cloth around it and this eagle painted gold. He's going to be spiffy. So, that's going to do it in this segment of the video. And uh, we'll come back later and do the other part. Okay, I'm back here on my Indian, finishing up. I'm starting to paint his hair. Now, when you go down to buy black, I found if you look for this color called licorice, it's almost black, but not quite. It's got just a little bit of gray to it, just enough gray that it's not black. And that's what I use for black. It just looks better. It's not 
black is a transparent color and this uh, this color isn't transparent which is what I want so what I'm doing here is just with a small brush I'll outline my hair now you see those burnt lines on his face this is where those come in handy because being burnt they've basically cauterized the wood to where uh, painting wet would think that the colors would bleed into each other but those burnt lines stop that just stop it dead and don't let it one color crawl into the other which keeps your colors really crisp, which is what you want. Okay. I don't use too much water when I'm doing this part because I want it to be good and black. Transparent like the other wash. Another, good, another reason you want to buy you a good brush, and by a good brush, you want a, a brush with animal hair, not plastic or something like that. Because you want your brush to absorb the paint into its bristles. You know, if you wet your hair, you know, you can... You know what happens when you get your hair wet? It stays wet until you dry it. Well, with a plastic brush, some of these brushes, you know, they just won't hold paint because they're made from something that doesn't hold paint. Now that I got it outlined, I can come in with my big, big brush and really lay in the color. And when you're painting, don't be a dabber. Load your brush up with paint. You want that paint to get back up in those hairs of the brush so you can get a lot of paint on there and paint for quite a while without having to go back and get more. get down to these areas where you're painting wood at the end of the grain it really takes a lot of paint it really absorbs it which is good just have to load your brush up more often Now you'll get holidays, my friend friend always called them holidays. After the paint dries, you'll come back and look at it and you'll see little white spots of wood showing back through where you didn't get it painted real good. You just need to go back and repaint those areas.
And another thing that's really important is to keep your hands clean. If you want good results, keep your hands clean. Even when you're carving your carvings, you know, if you get dirty hands, people say, oh, what do you do after you finish carving? Well, I go and I wash my carving soap and water. Well, I'd never do that because that water that you're going to use and the soap that's mixed in with it is going to soak down into the wood and no matter how hard you try you're never going to get rid of that soap residue some of it anyway that, that's soaked into that wood if you keep your hands clean while you're carving and your gloves clean you're going to have a clean carving when you're finished But you won't need to take it and treat it by, like a piece of old clothing. Mm -hmm. You can see that black paint just will not cross those burn lines. add this video onto the back, back of that one we just did earlier. You ever see what I'm talking about? And if I hadn't seen that, that would have been a holiday right there. I'm see it? Wood showing through. It's blurry, sorry. Anyway, it's no longer a holiday. They'll show up though. You just got to keep your eye out for them. All right. Take all my paint out of that little brush. Starting to look like an Indian, huh? Let's just set him on there right gently. Like that. Okay, now that's going to do it. So the next time we'll come back and uh, it's too wet to paint the braid wraps. And we'll work on that and the hat and uh, get the upper area finished off along with the feathers. Okay? So until then, I'll talk to you later.